Flirting in the middle of a pandemic like COVID or coronavirus is more difficult, but not impossible. This is a time to thrive, just like every other day, pandemic or not. To flourish as best you can in every way, even in seriously challenging circumstances like we all have going on right now. Don't just shrink into a corner. You just have to find ways to do so that are appropriate for this special time, that benefit your health and wellness, and are respectful and hopefully beneficial and appreciated by others. And keep in mind that this storm will pass. It will just take a little while. So hang in there. All right. Our topic is flirting and meeting women and doing so confidently and in high quality ways. It turns out that in pandemics, there are several things you need to take into consideration for your in-person and online approaches specific to COVID and being mindful of and full of empathy for how others are feeling and doing out there. Today, we're going to cover all of that and give you some great ready to use examples and pointers in this part one of our gentlemanly flirting during a pandemic series. I enjoyed making this special content for you guys, but I do hope this ends quickly enough where we don't need to do too many episodes in this special series. I'd like to make happier examples for you. Anyway, here we are. Before we continue, let's take a care of a little bit of business for just a few quick seconds and hear from our sponsor, me. Then we will dig in. Hi everyone, welcome to the Gentleman's Guide to Flirting. I am David, the author of the book of the same name, Gentleman's Guide to Flirting, available on Amazon.com. I am also your host and the exalted leader of the Gentleman's Guide to Flirting empire. You will be able to find this content on YouTube or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Thank you for joining. Let's get started. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Episode 3 of Gentleman's Guide to Flirting. It is August 8th. 2020, and we are in the middle of the COVID coronavirus pandemic. What I want to do today is share some advice I have specific to flirting and social contact and meeting people during a pandemic like this. As you know, there are millions of people out there maybe feeling alone or they lost their job or are feeling a bit helpless, and I want to do my small part to help if I can. I am David, the author of the Gentleman's Guide to Flirting book. I did not include any COVID-19 specific material in the book because I didn't think it would stand up to the test of time. I believe after a certain amount of time passes, either due to the development of effective vaccines or other treatments, or due to the virus affecting a large enough percentage of the population over time, what they call herd immunity, this storm will eventually pass. But while we were in the storm, do we stop living, trying to be happy, socializing? No. Well, there are differences right now. Some people are scared of the virus due to health concerns for themselves, or maybe out of concern for an elderly person or a child that they live with or come into contact with, or someone else that lives with them or they are close to. We all need to respect that for a while, for as long as needed. But that doesn't mean you need to completely stop making approaches and flirting and trying to connect with people and socialize. Some ladies are feeling just as disconnected as maybe you are right now and will appreciate the social contact or maybe just a smile. Who doesn't like having their day brightened up from time to time? So we can still flirt, but covet style. Let's dig in with some in-person examples. Uh, how, just simple, a simple hello there, how are you, is uh, still good for all purposes. It is probably the best opener that's ever existed. Uh, but your tonality makes a, makes a huge difference there with that or any other, or any other in-person approach. There's creepy ways to say this, and there's some more fun ways. Uh, you know, hello there, how are you, is, uh, you know... Uh, non-threatening, non-creepy, but saying hello there, how are you, could be interpreted as a threat or just creepy and maybe a turnoff. So be careful with that. F co specifically COVID related, uh, you know, a lot of people are walking around feeling uh, maybe a little self-conscious about how they look on their mask, but just, just tell her, just try this one. Just say, hey, you look cute in your mask with a smile on your face. 
Uh, don't even say hi. Just say it with a smile. Now, not a leering smile, a, a nice smile, a whole, a whole face smile, just a friendly one. Hey, you look cute in your mask. Here's an example of uh, this. Uh, I was in a, a grocery store waiting to check out. Um, and the when, I, when it came my time to walk up to the uh, checkout, uh, the, the lovely lady there said, Hey, I'm sorry I, ha I had you wait so long, but me... You know, again, want to make people feel good. I just said, hey, uh, you know what? I was just admiring how good you look in your mask. Um, then she went to a long story about how she didn't like people looking at her when she was young. But when, after she turned 40, uh, she switched 180 degrees. Uh, she continued on to say that her sister is a little older than her. And when she asked, like, what was going to happen later after she got older past 40, she said her sister just said it would get worse. And uh, basically, the lady, the lady, when I wrapped up, paid, and was, was walking away, she thanked me for, you know, making her day. Um, but that just shows you it doesn't hurt to go be show, show a little kindness, a little playful flirtation is, is perfectly fine normally. How about some other day-to-day -day, uh, situations? Uh, this is something that <laughs> I'm sure a lot of us are having this experience now, but when I go down to look at the empty shelves and the uh, cleaning supplies line and, and the and the in my local stores uh sometimes i uh, i just go and just joke with uh, people around saying hey do you think we'll be able to buy clorox or lysol disinfecting wipes by christmas you know just uh in a joking tone give a little giggle uh there's a more upbeat way option there you can make one of use too i'd say hey one fine day i'm gonna strut down this cleaning supplies aisle and end up with a Clorox and a Lysol dif disinfecting wipe canister in each hand, and my heart will leap with joy. Uh, a lot of people aren't expecting any uh, one to just blurt that out, and uh, and I found that something like that's often very well received. You can try toilet paper jokes too, but um, I try to stay away from anything that may feel a little dirty. But you know, uh, to each his own. Now, just bear in mind, you know, we are in COVID times, and it's not the same as uh, you know, like how we would normally go about our approaches, like we cover in the book uh, extensively. Not everyone wants you to be close, so you know, keep your distance. But at the same time, don't be afraid to take a chance to reach out to someone safely and make their day. Covet or no covet, you need to build up your resistance to rejection to where it doesn't hurt you at all. So as you go from making your first few uh, you know, approaches to hundreds to thousands over the course of years, like we discuss in the book, uh, you'll get, eventually get to the point where you know people saying no to you or just not replying doesn't hurt you at all. And, and you'll uh, have so many positive interactions that this will probably become like a lifelong habit for you flirting. So that's, uh, those are my thoughts for in person. I think that given, um, how awkward things can be in person, I think there's more and more uh, appeal to moving online with your approaches, uh, and on online dating, online sites, uh, dating apps, they have their good points and bad points. Uh, one of the things that I think is going on right now is. There's so many people moving online that the ladies' inboxes are overflowing. That was already a problem, as I understand it, with all the major dating applications and dating websites. But now, uh, with so many people fe feeling put off and lonely and you know wanting to connect like they would just from a human level, I think the, the appeal of the online options is growing. But the, uh, the percentage of guys out there are making mistakes um, and not taking steps to stand out is making kind of the problems worse there. So what I want to do is give you guys uh, several options that came to mind that I think are, are good to help you address this problem because um, it was never really a great approach online to just say hi or hello or what's up or hey and expect a reply. Because when you're a lady on a on an online dating site, especially the you know, younger, more attractive ones, I'm sorry to say, uh, their inboxes are pretty full of all that. So, you know, if you had hundreds of messages from all kinds of strangers that just say, hey, hey, what's up? And uh, you got to go look at their profile and try, and try to make a decision on who to reply back to. That's, 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 that's kind of a big job. So I think it's, it's more productive for you to say something up front to, um, 
make yourself really stand out, to maybe get a smile, to catch her attention, to say something to her that she's never heard in her life before. In addition to having your profile squared away, you know, be honest, uh, you know, all, all the stuff we cover in the book about how to set up a, a, a really a great and effective and honest and genuine profile. But let's get into a few examples that may work online. Uh, j I'm going to read each thing that I put on screen for the people uh, viewing through YouTube. I'm going to read them out because this, this same content goes up through our podcast. So uh, bear with me as I read them out. Uh, number one. Hi, how are you? As you contemplate whether to reply, I should inform you that science has not yet explained why my wraparound hugs and giving me smooches is so beneficial for lowering stress and anxiety and improving overall wellness. All right, so, you know, that's the tone I take of, yes, it's full of shit, and yes, it's making grandiose claims, uh, but I, I like those. I, I think that making grandiose claims or making a fake confession to something normal or harmless is good humor material. It's good. It's a good way to go and stand out in your opening greeting. Um, and I, I think your success rate, you'll see your success rate go up if you move to doing something like this now. Here, let's try another one. Two, if you're into bad boys, as you can sense I might be from my photos, I'm your guy. I'll have you know that I don't always wash my hands for the full 20 seconds that the CDC recommends. Sometimes I stop at 18 or 19. Moreover, I might be the greatest candidate on here, maybe even the greatest guy of all time. Obviously, I'm full of crap, uh, but being confident in a funny way isn't something that I think the ladies are seeing in, in their mailboxes, uh, in their inboxes on the dating site. So, so uh, give it a thought and see if that works for you, if you can make that, say that without, uh, you know, embarrassing yourself. Let's try another one. Number three. I understand that I might not be your normal choice appearance-wise, myself being bowling shoe un unattractive. You'll like me otherwise. You're being pretty, well, frankly, that's good for me. Plus, I imagine you are likely interesting. Let's talk it over. This one's a little different, because the first portion of it, the bowling shoe unattractive piece, is self-deprecating humor. I, 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 I tend to like that. I, you see, you'll see how it plays in your case, you may be a beautiful man, and that's not an appropriate thing to say, but if you're an ordinary looking dude like me, I guarantee you guys, uh, like 99% of you look better than me. Uh, being self-deprecating is not a bad play. Um, there was a second piece to it, plus I imagine you are likely interesting, is a half-assed insult. And um, uh, I, I put that in there to try to draw conversation out of her, right? Like if she agrees that you're bowling, she's unattractive, so yeah, okay, now it's a swipe left and there you go. But uh, it's almost an insult or a challenge to say, I think you you might be, you're pretty, yes, but uh, you might be interesting. I, I, I find that uh, is a, and it may improve your chances of getting a reply back. All right, let's try another one. Four, hello there. I hope Cupid followed CDC guidance and wiped down his arrow with an approved coronavirus, coronavirus disinfectant before he flicked one year away, causing you to be smitten with my picture. Again, you know, completely full of beans there. Uh, it's uh, obviously topical. It's got the CDC guidance with Cupid's arrows. I mean, who's who thinks that way? Give it a shot. See what you think. See what, see what, your, see what your results are. Number five, before you hit reply, I should warn you that I am charming and charismatic at levels science has yet to explain. Simple, to the point, full of beans, confident, all at the same time. See how it works for you. Six, warning, side effects of dating me can include involuntary smiling, uncontrolled giggling, increased feelings of wellness, decreased anxiety, and in rare cases, delirious happiness. Corny, yes. Add your, more, add your own medical fake side effects. Do it. Do it, Daddy. Right. Uh, see how that one works for you. Number seven. I hope you're seated. Grab the armrest and steady yourself because I'm about to rock your world with an irresistible opening line. This is corny example number one. Are you a cup of tea? Because you are unbearably hot. <laughs> what do you think about that? How am I doing with the flirting? Let's talk it over. Uh, the next one, uh, number eight, another corny example. If you're not comfortable with the um, kind of aggressive uh, ones I, put, I gave earlier, there's another corny one just to see if you can get her to smile and reply back. Uh, again, same uh, kind of container. It's uh, couched in. I hope you're seated. Grab the armrest and steady yourself because I'm about to rock your world with an irresistible opening line. 
You have me feeling like a botanic garden. I'm filled with butterflies. How am I doing with the flirting? Let's talk it over. Okay, I, I know it's that's goofy. It's corny, but give it a try. Uh, just, just another tool in your um, uh, arsenal there. Now, what do you do if you get a reply back? And you will if you go if you go take these. Uh, I think it's eight and sp I don't so, so recommend doing this, but if you use all eight of them, spray them around to, I, I guarantee you, you're going to get some replies back because the ladies aren't used to seeing this kind of stuff in their inboxes. And it'll be just curious if nothing else is to go see who on earth would send me such a thing, but you need to have something to go and, uh, you know, a reply back with and continue the conversation. And when we cover being prepared for that in the book exhaustively. So just kind of, you know, kind of be mindful of that. But again, these are online examples. So you got time to get your thoughts straight before you concoct a reply, but you want to transition over to, uh, you know, being genuinely, genuinely yourself uh, fairly quickly afterward, you know, um, being genuinely interested in learning about her. Uh, to me, I like to move off online platforms to, in-person meetings as quickly as I can, because I don't, I, I you, you could communicate far more effectively in person. Uh, you know, I think like studies have said that like, but somewhere between 80 to 90% plus of human communication is nonverbal. It's not the words you're saying. Like a lot of it's your body language. Um, a good portion of it is your tonality, the, the, the way you're saying things. And only like maybe maximum is like 10% of your actual word. So I like to move over to something that's live that allows you to communicate using all those aspects as quickly as possible. Now, if you jump to asking a lady, hey, hey I'm, I'm, I'm interested in you and I'd like to go and meet you in person, she, she may push back on that, but that's okay because one thing that the uh, one positive kind of effect sort of the, that we've had from COVID and coronavirus is the uh, increasing prevalence of online meeting solutions out there, Zoom, Z-O-O-M, is one of several options that you can use for totally free to go and set up an online meeting between the two of you that where there's no risk to her, there's no cost to you, and, and no risk to you really, uh, from having a little quick screening meeting and, and quickly get away from just typing things back and forth of emojis and stuff in chat where there's all kinds of rooms for misinterpretation, misunderstandings, and miss messages. I like to try to go and move, as we discuss in the book, move fairly quickly to something that's more in person to get that human touch. You can really see who she is and hear and feel who she is, and she could do the same. Do the same with you. So uh, you know, offer the Zoom meeting, um, and and I just have a couple points about that too. Darn it. Uh, uh, when you offer the Zoom meeting, maybe, you know, I don't, it's your choice, but I would suggest maybe you suggest that she doesn't need to get dolled up for an online meeting. She doesn't need to get all made up and we're pretty close. Are you to tell her that you really, you want to see the real her, you know, what she, how she really is. So please don't, you know, custom says if you're going to meet in person at a restaurant, your first date, you got to really put your best self out there. But and maybe make the offer to her to show her what kind of person you are that says she doesn't need to go to all that effort and spend hours with the makeup and the hair. Uh, you want to see what she's like on, on her day-to-day. -day. I, I think she might be impressed by hearing that. Now, you, however, you know, she comes back to you and says, no, I want to see the real you. You don't freaking do it. You get dressed properly. Get yourself camera ready. Wash. You're taking showers every day, right? Well, if not, wash for this one, darn it. Uh, take care of your hair, brush your teeth, wear pants, right? Your, your, your camera's going to be from like waist up or maybe shoulders up, but darn it, wear pants. When the meeting starts, when your Zoom meeting, your online meeting starts, just stand up and show her that you're wearing the goddamn pants. It's a good joke. If, if she's someone that works from home, or like her, her, she's an office kind of worker and she can work from home and she has lots of meetings, she knows a lot of people aren't wearing the goddamn pants, like including the ladies. They're wearing like something good from the waist up and they're wearing their pajama, <laughs> the pajamas from the bottom down or sitting in their underwear. You show her. It's a good joke. Just stop saying, I'm wearing pants. I took this, I took this meeting seriously. I'll, I'll have you know. Uh, and also, be mindful of what you're showing behind you on camera. Clean up, you know, like uh, uh, sit in a place in your home that's not so junky or just clean up wherever, wherever it is you're going to conduct the, meet, the, 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 the Zoom meeting. 
Uh, and I want to suggest to you, don't stage things behind you that, sh that, that l don't lead with your money. Don't put expensive possessions behind you because you're trying to show off. If you have money, don't lead with money, right? You, well, lead with you and focus on your interest in her and learning about her and let it be a natural back and forth where you ask her something, she asks you something, and you learn about each other like, like two human beings. And one more point I want to make, and this is an awkward one, but no nudity. No nudity. Uh, it, it's going to happen to you. Um, if you keep listening to this channel, you keep applying yourself, you, you're, you're a great guy. It's going to show. Eventually, you're going to get to a playful lady who is going to make an offer. It's, it happens, man. And you got to be able to deal with it. Um, she's going to say how pretty she looks in this new thing or this new lingerie or in some state of undress and she's going to offer to let you see, turn it down nicely. Tell her that she is pretty, uh, the, but take control of that situation. Uh, tell her that she can, she can show you all that in person later, uh, because, um, and, and say this really nicely. Don't hurt her feelings. Uh, you don't want your, your nudes or dick pics for God's sakes out there. And you don't want her to put her stuff out there either. You want to treat her with respect and you're playing the long game, right? If she wants to um, show you how lovely she is, what a beautiful woman she is, um, uh, just tell her she can do that in person later and leave it at that. And that sh just shows you that you are, you are a guy, you're a respectful guy, but you're also, you're the real deal. Anyway, uh, n no nudity, don't do it, no dick pics, don't put that shit out there because you, you don't know where, where you're going to be later in life, where you are now. You don't want your clients, your customers, if you run for political office, you don't. You don't want that kind of stuff hanging out there on the, on the internet. That, that stuff lasts forever and you don't want it out there. Anyway, that's all that I have. But if you guys have some great COVID-related flirting lines you want to share, flirting ideas, put your, put your suggestions in the comments below on YouTube. And please don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. Uh, there will be more um, videos and podcasts on the subject of COVID-related flirting later, I, I'm, I'm afraid to say, because I think this problem will be with us for at least a, at least a several months more and i look forward to the day when we don't don't need to do this and we can have a hundred percent you know just normal content but i'm going to support you guys as best i can um see you later bye